Well, thank you for staying. Let's get into our first story now. And a 21-year-old man has been shot dead after he attacked the home of his 14-year-old girlfriend at Nyamikrom near Adansi Asokwa in the Ashanti region. The deceased, known only as Cody, was shot in the abdomen at close range by an unidentified person while chasing the girlfriend's father with a machete. Here's the rest of the story. The deceased, in the company of his friends armed with machetes and clubs, stormed the Nyamikrum community from Ayekwa to avenge a breakup with his JHS3 girlfriend. The gang inflicted machete wounds on the brother of the 14-year-old girl. A shout for help from the father of the girl who was being chased by the deceased attracted some members of the community. In the ensuing conflict, Kode was shot by an unknown assailant. The death of Kode angered the gang who retreated, regrouped and launched more attacks on Nyamikrum community. The Fomina police later brought the situation under control. Yao Al-Hassan is father of the girl. I heard my children call my name, claiming they are being attacked. I came out to find some boys, some of them smoking weed. They numbered more than 20. I started calling for help. With Machete, they destroyed some properties here. One chased me with Machete, and from nowhere, we had a gunshot. I later noticed he was shot. The 14-year-old girl tells Joy News she broke up with the deceased because he's a chain smoker. He was my boyfriend, but I left him because of the immoral behavior. So I ditched him for the committee chairman's son. He thought it was my new boyfriend who picked the phone the last time he called. He attacked him for that reason. But some people restrained him. Meanwhile, police at Fomina have arrested three suspects believed to be members of the gang that attacked Nyamikrum community. Now, residents of Kitoe in the Salaga South municipality of the Savannah region have decried the deplorable conditions of the Kitoe Salaga Road linking the area, a major food basket in the region. They have described their roads as the worst in the region, labeling it a death trap. Northern region's Martina Bugri now reports. The Quito electoral area has 12 communities, a major food growing area in the Salaga South municipality. But over the years, neglect of the road has literally cut them from the rest of the world. Drivers must learn to be patient and with great care to navigate the road. For now, commercial vehicles have stopped plying the area. Therefore, to travel to Salaga or Pandai, one has to travel on a motorcycle or a tricycle. The residents say to travel with a sick person or a woman in labor, one would have to spend hours on the road, sometimes losing the patient. Assemblyman for the area, Liman Elijah, said they are currently cut off from the rest of the world. A situation, he said, is disturbing. And looking at the road, this is a major road that supplies food stamp to Salaga Market. And when you look at it, for about past months, cars cannot even go to Salaga Market. It was only motokins and other things. And any time it rains, the motokins cannot also go. And they, we only have one clinic on this route. And that clinic 
refer to Salaga Hospital. So referring women from here or clients from here to Salaga is also another problem. The motor kings cannot even go. So when you get a car, they will not go. So it's a problem for them to even travel. Even when it is in the night, the clients cannot go. So we are suffering. The people are suffering. Another resident, Mbabai, lamented that the situation is unbearable. This road is so terrible. You can ride and get to a place you cannot go again. So, if a motorbike can get stuck, imagine a vehicle. If the authorities believe we are humans, they should consider us and fix the road. Traders are losing for us. If the road is not fixed, no vote. Madam Mary said people continue to lose their lives on that road, especially pregnant women. My sons will be running everywhere to either get me drugs to relieve me of pain or take me to the hospital. The roads are in terrible state. Every year, politicians come and deceive us, vote for us, we would fix your rule. But nothing has been done. This bad road has taken many of our colleagues to their early graves. Nana Kojo Pine Owusu, who had traveled from the Ashanti region to the area, could ask for only one thing, help to save lives. So from Salga to Gruby Quartet, in fact, the road is very bad. So during the rainy season, you know, if the car brings some goods from Gruby Quartet to Salga or from Salga to Gruby Quartet, in fact, it's not easy. At times, they got accident on the road. Please, we are begging to government to uh, maintain the road from Gruby Quartet to Salga or Salga to Gruby Quartet. For these people, they have resolved that until their road is fixed, no political party is allowed into the area to campaign for the 2024 general elections. For Joy News, Martina Bugri reported. Let's talk politics now. And flag bearer hopeful of the new patriotic party, Alan Chemating, is optimistic he is the only candidate who poses a threat to the electoral fortunes of the National Democratic Congress in the Volta region. He says the Voltarians will consider his track record, charisma, and popularity and would vote for him if he becomes the flag bearer of the governing party. He's asking NPP delegates in the region to endorse his candidature to enable the governing party win the 2024 general election and maintain power. The presidential hopeful Alan John Kojoche Mantin kicked off his cluster tour of the Volta region in Sugakope, where he met delegates from South, North, and Central Town constituencies. He shared with them his transformational agenda for both the New Patriotic Party and Ghana. The team proceeded to apply to meet delegates from Ketu South, Anglo, and Keta constituencies. Mr. Chairman Tin entreated delegates to impose their confidence in him as he stands tall among the 10 candidates to win power for the NPP. I'm the only one who can stand tall before the guys in Two of us! Two of us! You see, the people of the Volta region have always been sending a message to NPP, except that we are not hearing them. Volta region has been saying, it's not that we don't like NPP. We like NPP, but bring the right yeah, yeah. Volta has been saying this for a long time. Yeah. If you bring Alan, Volta will now talk to NPP.
he outlined his vision of amassing wealth for the NPP through job creation. In 2005, 2006, I've been talking about this. We are in 2023. I provided funds to every constituency okay. to start their own business so that they can make money every month. Not only to look after the constituency, but to pay allowances to executives. 2005, 2006, I was talking about how to make the party financially strong by helping them to start their own business at the constituency level. 2006. So today, when somebody deceives you that, oh, Alan, he's just talking. How can you pay them? The businesses that NPP will be establishing will be stronger than what the government is going to establish. Mr. Chiremantin and the team ended the first day of his tour of the Volta region in Juje, where he met delegates from Ketu North, Akachi South and North constituencies. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News. <laughs> Now, ECOWAS agencies have joined forces to further develop the public health workforce in the region with an introduction of new courses. Resident representative of ECOWAS to Ghana, Baba Ghana Wakil, revealed COVID-19 became a threat to most African countries and it was essential to ensure our preparedness towards another pandemic. There's more in this report put together by Jacqueline Ansumayabwa. The ECOWAS One Health Leadership Program has been created for health professionals from ECOWAS member countries aimed at helping the countries enhance their pandemic preparedness and response systems. Resident representative of ECOWAS to Ghana, Baba Ghana Wakil, stated that Africa's experience with pandemics and endemics has not been ideal, hence there is a need for capacity building. Our experience, our journey through the last couple of years in dealing with pandemics and epidemics, not just uh, COVID-19, but also Ebola and all the others I have mentioned. Our journey shows us that we need to develop our own national and regional capacity. For instance, in the development of vaccines, we found out that when COVID-19 hit us, there was no African country in the entire 55 countries in Africa that is capable of manufacturing vaccines. So we were at the mercy of developed countries to assist us, and they were dealing with their own issues there. So we have now realized that health security is as important as food security and energy security. He further revealed that there is empirical data and research suggesting a global emergency which will require an absolute preparedness. There is empirical evidence to suggest that there is a global emergency, maybe due to climate change and other attendant factors, that we are going to witness a lot of epidemics and pandemics in the near future. Head of Regional Pandemic Program, Damien Bishop, says the One Health course will provide quick and effective information on pandemic concerns and how to mitigate them. There's a lot of training delivered by lots of different partners on different aspects of One, One Health and pandemic prevention. What we're trying to encourage is an approach based on networking and based on communication, effective communication and timely communication so that a response to a pandemic can be mitigated, so that a response can be earlier, so it can be better delivered and so that information is shared with the right people at the right time. The course duration is expected to span for 12 days. For Joy News, Jacqueline and Sumai Yaboa. Let's talk technical education now and Deputy Director General of the Ghana TVET Service, David Pratt, has indicated that about 51,000 students have been enrolled into TVET institutions across the country. He says the rebranding and tooling of TVET have made technical and vocational institutions attractive and a destination for most of the youth. 
Mr. Pratt spoke at the signing of an MOU between the British Council, the European Union, and the two key bodies of the National Technical and Vocational Education and Training. A memorandum of understanding is aimed at helping the parties identify and effectively play their roles in enhancing skills needed to increase agricultural production in Ghana. The project is co-founded by the European Union and the German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, the Deputy Director General for Ghana TVET Service. David Prass said TVET schools have become very attractive for students to study. We are also uh, upgrading these institutions to, to become modern and, and, and to offer programs. In view of that, the junior high school students uh, have been trooping into the TVET institutions because that is what is going to give them the employable skills. For the first time in the history of uh, TVET delivery in the country, we, last year we had 47,000 enrollment in the TVET uh, institutions. This year we are looking at uh, 51,000. The British Council Country Director Nido Dudodu said the partnership is to ensure that they create decent jobs for the youth in northern Ghana in the area of agriculture. The problem of youth unemployment is going to be with us for quite a while. And so we have no illusions that through this project we're going to solve that problem all at once. And that is why instead of developing our own curriculum uh, and using it to train young people, we decided to work with training institutions such that the training institutions own capacity to develop curriculum is enhanced. They would have all these materials post the project and then the opportunity for more young people beyond the numbers that this project will deal with, will be able to go through training institutions to equip themselves in these three areas and, you know, keep uh, being trained to fill demand-driven positions that commercial agriculture production you know, brings up up north here. The chief of Sakoya, Sakoya Na Mahama Sintaro, said the global trend in agriculture is moving towards competent training. Therefore, the program comes in handy. And that's why I started by saying I'm very excited about it. That comes to actually enhance what I have been doing for the last eight years and that is giving young people opportunity to explore their potential in agriculture, be it agricultural mechanization, where we teach them how to not just drive a tractor, but operate and manage a tractor and all the agricultural implements that goes to do production uh, and then post-harvesting as well. We also give life sets of skills in the agricultural value chain. For example, looking at how do we add value to what we produce. Primarily, we do a lot of production-based agriculture in the northern part of the country. So programs like this comes to enhance and help us achieve that objective of adding value where producers can get a lot more money that is more sustainable, that can create livelihood, and as well as employment generation. Principal, Dabopa Technical Institute, Mahama Mariama said, the training will help with retooling of her institution and to train the youth to be economically empowered. This is going to help us, I mean, train the young people with skills to be able to get employed by themselves or uh, others. It is also going to help us possibly retool the institutions to uh, help us give the young and teaming youth who are crying for employment. You all know the unemployment figures are rising day by day. And uh, projects like this would help us uh, train these young ones with employable skills to put food on the table and possibly produce to export. And that's how we cap off the news, but stay with us. The news review is up next with Kweku Painter.